Ground Zero, near Kirchatov in East Kazakhstan. The first Soviet nuclear weapon test was carried out on this vast and featureless steppe just 100 miles from Semipalatinsk on August 29, 1949. It remained an epicenter of the Cold War for the former Soviet Union, and 456 nuclear weapons were detonated at the testing site until 1989. The destructive power of the blasts left a dark legacy for the local people, including cancer and birth defects. The residents of the region continue to suffer until today. Even before Kazakhstan achieved independence in 1991, President Nursultan Nazarbayev ordered the nuclear test site at Semipalatinsk to be shut down on August 29, 1991. Tomorrow is the 21st anniversary since the closure of the most powerful nuclear test site after Nevada in our territory at Semipalatinsk. Under the Soviet rule, 500 nuclear devices were detonated at this test site, with a cumulative power 2,500 times greater than the nuclear charge which exploded in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Approximately one and a half million people have suffered in this densely populated surrounding area. Today, President Nazarbayev is applauded by leaders around the world for his decision to close the test site and banish all nuclear weapons on the territory. The 2010 Nuclear Security Summit in Washington and the 2012 summit in Seoul were milestones towards the achievement of global nuclear safety. Kazakhstan's example has inspired world leaders and the vision of nuclear safety across the globe is moving closer to becoming a reality. Just five months later, representatives from parliaments and governments from 75 countries and more than 20 international organizations met at the conference from a nuclear test ban to a nuclear weapons-free world in Astana. It was scheduled for the 29th of August during the UN International Day Against Nuclear Testing. This day was declared unanimously by the UN General Assembly to be annually held because it marks the closing of the world's second largest nuclear test site in Semipalatinsk. The conference started on August 28th with a trip for delegates and international media to East Kazakhstan. They visited the Institute of Radiation Safety to learn about the results of scientific research and the Nuclear Technology Park, which utilizes innovative manufacturing techniques. A smaller group traveled to the center of the 80-mile-wide test site at Ground Zero. Visiting this area is a sobering experience. The landscape is flat, with dry scrub as far as the eye can see. The site has a ring of abandoned buildings. Cameras and recording equipment were attached to the watchtowers. The concrete bunkers look like shark fins in an atomic desert. They were designed to measure the intensity of nuclear radiation. There was an eerie silence in this setting until the former Australian foreign minister addressed the group with his emotional speech about this sad chapter of human history. Not one of those weapons tested saving the world from nuclear catastrophe, rather every one of them bringing us ever closer to that. So long as any state has nuclear weapons, others will want them. The delegates and media left and traveled to Semipalatinsk, now called Siemye City, to mark the 21st anniversary of the closing of the nuclear test site. The residents celebrated with the delegates. <laughs> In 
A groundbreaking ceremony for a new Museum of Peace in honor of nuclear testing victims was held. Vladimir Cimosiewicz, the former Prime Minister of Poland, spoke to the delegates and the people of Szemje. He was joined by politicians from Canada, Japan and Kazakhstan to promote global nuclear peace. This was also the theme of the following conference in Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. 200 participants traveled to the political and administrative center in the middle of the Great Steppe. Since 1998, the city has swiftly grown into a vibrant new metropolis with world-class architectural wonders. President Nazarbayev opened the conference from a nuclear test ban to a nuclear weapons-free world in Astana with his speech to international leaders, parliamentarians, representatives from the United Nations, disarmament experts, and key non-governmental organizations. He also introduced a new global project. Today, Kazakhstan launches the International Atom Project. Under this project, any person in this world who opposes nuclear weapons can sign an online petition to the governments of the world, calling on them to renounce nuclear testing and to achieve the early entry into force of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. I encourage the participants and all the people of goodwill in the world to support the Atom Project and to make a world without nuclear weapons our most important goal. The conference concluded with an appeal to parliaments and governments to stop any further nuclear weapons production and reduce the role of nuclear weapons. The resolution was unanimously approved. The declaration was also highly appreciated by Karabyek Kuyukov, the honorary ambassador of the Atom Project. He was born without arms and experienced many nuclear tests as a child in East Kazakhstan. At the conference, journalists were standing in line for an interview to hear his story. We lived in a small house and in the morning I was often awakened by the trembling of the furniture and the rattling of the dishes. It was another nuclear test. It did feel like an earthquake. My mother died of stomach cancer. She was severely disabled. We realized the reason much later because my mother had two children before me who did not live up to one year, dying one after the other. The 44-year-old is an active supporter of the international anti-nuclear weapons movement. The motivation for his engagement is not his own handicap, but the suffering of others. Surely this project wants to open the eyes of the world to the results of these tests. I have seen a lot of sick children who were born with abnormalities. And parents tried to hide them in their houses not even letting them out, because they were ashamed. I want to help these children very much. Karipek Kuyukov has embraced life without arms and become a renowned artist, painting with his legs and mouth. People in his hometown watched as the sky lit up the residents have suffered the terrible effects of nuclear radiation as a result. The damage caused by radioactive fallout is not limited to one generation, but is passed on. Today, the Atom Project tells their stories with the faces, bodies, and lives of the victims. Supporters can sign the petition at atomproject.org to demand an end to nuclear weapons testing. This message of concerned people from all over the world will be brought to the attention of governments and the world's nuclear leaders who have not yet signed or ratified the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Your participation is needed for an influential campaign to secure the future of coming generations. Act now. Semipalatinsk has become a powerful symbol of hope and a leading example. The initiative is sponsored by the Nazarbayev Center as an expression of a dream that has eluded mankind for nearly 70 years. A world free of nuclear weapons.